Good. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. Uh, we are going to be looking at taking this green screen shot over here and turning it into something that looks a little bit, well, hopefully very much like this composite at the end. And we're going to be doing all of this in Premiere Pro. But as Jesse said, all these techniques work across the board. So whether you're working in uh, Avid or After Effects, wherever you are using Continuum, these are going to be the same sort of things to look out for. So we do have quite a lot to go through, so I'm not going to waste too much time sort of jabbering on right at the very beginning. So I think it's important when we first look at any of our green screen shots to actually kind of just evaluate it and see where particular problems are going to be. Um, and obviously, when we're, we're doing um, keying, you know, there are different ways of doing it depending on how fine uh, or how finely detailed you actually need to get down. If you're just doing something that's sort of quick editorial, um, you know, presenter on a uh, on a on a easy background, that's got a, a different level of keying to doing sort of some full compositing. But the concepts are the same. It's just where you stop is uh, is the only different way. So if we take a, a quick look at our our shot here. You can see a few things are going to stand out straight away. Uh, one is the fact that we've got quite an uneven uh, green screen at the back. You can see there's uh, shadows and highlights being picked up. There's a few wrinkles here and there. Uh, that's going to cause us some trouble, maybe. You can also see in the right hand side over here that we actually don't have a, our green screen going all the way to the edge of frame. So obviously, that's going to cause us some issues. And if I zoom in, you'll see probably the biggest issue we're going to have. Lovely fine hair. Uh, this, this sort of fine detailed hair is often very, very tricky to, to key out and key out convincingly. Um, often what we'll get is sort of like just some either very bobbly hair or something that just yeah looks a bit of a mess. So we're going to have a, a look at that. And as I move down a little bit, we're going to see one other little problem. I'm just going to show it to you right now. On the left hand side of the sword here, you're also going to see we've got some reflections of the green happening in the sword. So that's going to cause us a couple of issues as well, but nothing that we can't fix. All right, so now we've got our sort of a, a sort of a brief idea of what we're looking at in terms of the key, let's actually start getting in and keying it out. So I'm going to come into my effects and I'm just going to type in primat, which I often type in as primate for some reason. But here it is, it's primat studio. And I'm going to just drag that over the top of my clip. Let's just drag this up here. So you can see I've got two clips. I've got the uh, green screen, and I've got my background here. So I've already done that little bit of the work for us. And if I pop into my effects controls now, and let's pull this down so we can get a better idea of what we're doing with the key. So we don't really need to see what's happening with the timeline right now. We can come over to Primat Studio itself. And Primat Studio looks to be this sort of big monstrous thing. There's, there's a lot of controls that we have available to us. But actually, when it comes to doing basic keying, it's really, really simple. We don't have to worry about any of this stuff. And all of this is laid out in a logical way, uh, as we'll see in just a moment. Um, we've got this big button here that says click to auto analyze. Uh, and the reason this, this big button is so big and so prominent is because it's the first thing that we want to do. Now. I could just click on it here, or I'm going to turn on my HUD in Primat Studio, and we actually have a UI that's sort of built in that's going to help us as well. And again, at the top, we have this Auto Analyze button. It's always the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm just going to click that button, wait a couple of seconds, and Primat's going to go along and have a little look and see what it thinks our, uh, our uh, background is made of. So if we had a blue screen, it will try and key out on the blue. This is trying to key out on the green. So far, so good. Now, also in our HUD here, 
we have different ways of viewing what's going on. So at the moment, we've got a final composite we're looking at. We can also look at the final mat, which shows us that we're actually not doing too badly. There's uh, you know, a bit of uh, a bit of gray here where we don't want it. If you're not used to, to looking at alpha channels, the long and short of it is that anything that is white is going to be opaque, stay in. Anything that's black is going to be keyed out. And anything that's gray is going to be keyed out more or less, depending on how dark or how light it is. Now, I like to look at this stage. I like to look at the mat status instead. Because what the mat status does is it gives us a sort of more basic, but actually much more useful way of checking out this mat. So we've only got three colors now. We've got black, white, and gray. So the uh, pixels that are black are 100% transparent. The pixels that are white are 100% opaque. And anything that's not either transparent or opaque is going to be gray. So this helps us come in and sort of decide what we're going to do with our, um, with our key. So I'm still on like clean background. So I can just draw on my viewer here. And this will start to key out some more of those colors that we want to get rid of. And I'm just going to come in and just draw over some of these edges here, draw over some of this here. So basically what I want to do is kind of get as much uh, you know, uh, difference or key out as much as I can just with the with this little tool right here. There we go. And because we're in matte status, anything that's even just remotely um, transparent or not transparent or not 100% transparent, I should say, is going to show up as this gray color. OK, but if we turn to final matte, we can get a, a much better idea of what is actually happening. So if I zoom in again here, what I'm desperate to try to do is to try and keep in this hair detail. I don't want to sort of lose all these details in the uh, in the mix. So if I was to come in and uh, I'm still in clean background. So if I was to come in and just sort of draw over the, those hair details, you can see they're going to get keyed out. We don't want that. The hair is is like the re the most important thing for me, um, and it's a sort of a hallmark of a of a good key where you can get a lot of really nice hair detail still in there. If I come down, though, you can see that we've got a little problem with the shield. And the problem with the shield is that uh, it's currently sort of being half keyed out. So whereas we were using clean background before, I'm just going to come down to clean foreground and just quickly draw over that and get rid of the same sort of thing. So I'm making this area now opaque so I can fill in most of these details just with the clean background and clean foreground. And that's that's looking all right. It's maybe a, a couple of small little bits and bobs that we want to change up or want to uh, make a little bit better, but that's that's fine. And if I just kind of scrub through here, we can start to see that we're still maintaining some of that really nice hair detail. Look at the sword. We come into the final composite. You can see the sword is being keyed out. That's that's not great, um, but you know we're we're gonna we're gonna fix that. Oops, I was in clean foreground. I actually, want to clean background just to take a little bit more out of that there. Now this doesn't look like the cleanest key at the moment, especially if I if I zoom in, you'll see that it's still looking a little bit kind of ropey at the moment. I'm not too concerned about that right now because we're gonna fix it in a minute but just so you know that I am aware of it. I'm much more concerned by this stuff out here. So all of this, this garbage right here. I've been focused on the areas just inside the, uh, the uh, just inside by where the, uh, the talent actually is. And I've kind of ignored the outside here. And there's a, there's a good reason for that because we can easily get rid of this stuff. But I want to show you something else beforehand. And this is something that's not in the UI. So I'm going to hide that and just move that out of the way for a sec. And this is something that, that 
is really, really useful for um, for when we're dealing with, if I just actually come in and look at my source, yeah, for when we're dealing with something that is a very uneven green screen like we have here. And this is a little feature called adjust light. So if I turn the adjust light on, uh, we don't see a difference because I'm not looking at the adjust light. Let's have a look at that adjusted light. If I turn that down to zero, or actually I can only take it to five, so I'll just turn it off for a second. You can see it's not, you know, this is the original here. If I turn it on and then start to turn it up, what you should be able to see is that it begins to even out some of the problems that we had in the green screen. So if I turn it off and turn it on, you should be able to start to see that it's it begins to even out some of the uh, some of the troubling, troublesome areas. So this can be useful. If I bring that over there. This can be useful if you are still having trouble um, sort of keeping in edge details in the hair or along the along fine edges, just to come in and have a look at the adjust light. In this case, even though we've got a very uneven screen, uh, we actually don't need that. I think we're doing all right just with our, our uh, normal composite here. So I'm going to start working big and then come into the details later. So details like hair, details like the sword, details like this little fringing at the bottom there. I'm going to deal with that in a second. What I'm most interested in is getting a cleaner background down here. And the way I sort of, uh, I'm going to sort this out is with the outside mask shape. And I'm going to use uh, Mocha and come in, and I'm just going to draw up a quick mask. So built into uh, the Primat uh, Studio, we actually have a version of Mocha, which if you don't know, it's uh, Mocha is a, a planar tracker, uh, which lets us tr uh, create and track uh, shapes in. We don't need to do anything too clever with this. I'm actually just using Mocha to create up a, a garbage map. Uh, so all I want to do is create a sort of rough shape. I don't, I'm not even going to bother keyframe this. I'm just going to create a rough shape that goes across the area to kind of just limit where I have to start keying. So that's that's going to be all right. That's going to take out all of that nonsense that we had over on the side here and on the side over here. I don't have to do anything too clever with that. I'm just going to exit, I'll save it out. And perfect, our squire disappears. Now, the reason for that is obviously because our outside mask needs to be inverted. So one simple click of that, and we've now got rid of all that rubbish. So, so far, so good. Cool. All right. If you do have any questions at any point, just type them into chat and we will definitely get to them. Uh, hopefully, most of those questions will be answered by the end of this webinar anyway. All right. So, the next thing I'm going to look at um, isn't going to be the sword. We're going to come back to the sword. The next thing I want to look at is actually how to deal with this hair detail here, because I think that's it's actually one of the, the sort of biggest things. And I'm going to come over to my effect controls on the left hand side. And we're going to look at spill. Now, we've got different ways of dealing with spill. We've got the normal spill replace mode where we look at either uh, a comp the complementary color of the keyed color we've, we're working with. So if it's green, complementary color of that is magenta. So it's going to start to mix that back in. Or if we were looking at blue, the complementary color of that is uh, yellow. So it's going to sort of mix that back in to try and neutralize the, the spill. But I'm just going to take my spill down, the spill remove level down to zero, just so you can see what troubles we are having with the spill. And that's looking pretty bad you know that's that's a lot of spill coming in uh, reflecting back off of the screen into the into the hair so if i uh, come in with a softened background i come down i select what my background is um, because i'm working in premiere i just choose whatever video layer i want to be working on uh, so i want to, to look at video uh, layer one uh, it's the same same way as we're working in avid as well 
and I can just turn up my spill replace amount there. And now you can see that it mixes back the background into the uh, into the spill. So it sort of starts to, to get rid of it using the um, using the colors from the background. I'm going to take this back down to zero again. And we'll see why in just a minute. Because we also have this secondary spill remover. Um, in uh, Continuum 2019.5, there was a, a new secondary spill remover added, which is just, it's a joy. I'm going to turn this on, just one click, and take a look at that. It's fixed up all of those problems straight away. Uh, if we did want to come in and have a little look at it and start to change things up a little bit here, we can do. Uh, we can even go back from to the uh, the classic continuum way of doing spill removal, which you know it's not as good. Let's just let's leave it at that. I like my my channel limited one, and we can even choose what sort of screen type we're working on, whether it's you know green, blue, or red. So what channel we're going to be limiting? I'm going to uh, leave that at auto. If we if it takes out too much. Thank you very much, Premier, for that little error. If it takes out too much, we can just sort of mix that back with the bias as well. But in this case, I think 50% was looking pretty good. Now, there's nothing to stop us from actually mixing these two spill removals, uh, spill removal processes together. So one of the things I quite like to do is to have the secondary spill removal on, but then also touch up the first spill amount just a little bit, sort of mix in some of those uh, background colors again. So if I take that, maybe uh, 50 is probably a bit too high, maybe take that to 20. We can start to retain some of those details in there without um, sort of sacrificing uh, any of the any of the colors. So that's actually looking looking all right. It's not perfect yet, but it's starting to look all right and we're still maintaining or still keeping in those details. So that's looking that's looking promising. Now, this secondary spill removal uh, is actually so powerful that it's its own effect as well. So if you wanted to use a different key for any particular reason, you can still use the BCC spill remover um, to do your more sort of uh, uh, complex or advanced uh, spill suppression there and that's that's looking all right cool okay so now we've we've got the spill sorted out that's actually fixed up um a ton of problems that we were having with the hair um a lot of the time if you're having issues with kind of hair or sort of fine details most people you know their their um, instinct is actually to go to this next part here, which is the the mat refiner uh, or mat refinement, and just sort of start to play around, soften the mats up, and kind of do it in a way that you're affecting the the mat itself. So you're you're sort of coming in and well, well let's have a little look. Let's just soften the mat up. So I've just set that to a quite a low number, uh, even three, and you can begin to see hopefully that that started to to soften the map but at the expense of eating some of our hair uh, the same with shrinking you know by coming in and maybe sort of shrinking the black levels up you know that's that's fixing a, fixing the mat up a little bit or or um, affecting the mat quite a bit and sort of taking those uh, details out but it's making our hair look worse rather than better so instead of doing that, you know, it's much better to actually come in and see what you can do with the uh, the spill removal first, rather than kind of head straight in to the to the mat refinement. Not saying there's not a uh, a place for mat refinement. There absolutely is, as we are going to see here. If I'm going to, I'll take my gamma down. Not to actually, if we take take the gamma up, so you can get more hair details. That's probably going a little bit too far. Uh, I am actually going to take my gamma down. We only need to take it down just a little bit. I'm going to take it down to about 0 0.9 there, just so that the, you know, some of the 
the uh, the middle grey hairs kind of just sit back a little bit. And we're starting to get somewhere. You know, that's that's looking that's looking pretty nice. Even though I scrub to a to a different area, you know, we're still keeping in a lot of that detail. If I scrub along there, you can see that the hair is flapping along in the wind and we're not losing it. Especially, you know, this this little strand along there, we're not losing it. We're still keeping that in. I really like that. So we're actually at a decent, a decent place. But we still have, obviously, uh, you know, there's there's still room to uh, to improve. Now, a lot of the time, if you're just doing uh, a straightforward, a very straightforward key, this is where you'd stop. You don't you don't need to do you know that much more. Um, I've done you know more than my fair share of presenters against uh, against green screen, and this is this is probably where I'd I'd end it because the effect itself is looking good enough. We don't need to do anything else. If we wanted to get a bit more in depth about it and uh, start correcting some other stuff up, some smaller stuff, you know, we uh, we're going to move on and have a look at that now. And the thing that I'm most interested in, let's uh, zoom in. It's one of those things that we looked at right at the very beginning. It's the sword. It's the sword here. So if I uh, just temporarily turn it off. You can see we've got reflection of the green screen happening in the sword. And it can also affect things like the shield as well. In this case, I think we've got a decent enough. We might have a little bit of the uh, shield. Ah, oh, there it is. Yep, yeah, just there. A little bit just there, reflecting off and um, ruining our shield. So what I want to do now is kind of do the opposite of what I was doing before. So we took the, um, we used Mocha to create a garbage mask to take out the stuff that we didn't want in the edges. Now we're gonna do a similar thing, but use Mocha to keep in stuff that we actually do want to keep. Uh, and we do that with the help of the inside mask shape. So let's come in, let's go to Mocha mask and let's launch Mocha one more time. And this is where you can start to see how um, let's take us to the to the end there. Yeah, how you can start to see how Mocha can really speed up this sort of process. Uh, I'm going to start with the shield because it's probably a bit easier to to see it on the shield. Uh, and I'm just going to create up a uh, shape and give it another color so we can see that a bit better down here. And I'm not going to do anything too crazy. All I'm going to do is tell Mocha what uh, or how I want it to to track it. Uh, and we've got a shield that's moving in perspective. So I'm going to tell it to track in perspective. And I'm just going to say track backwards. And what Mocha is going to do is it's going to look at the shape that we have created. And it is going to look at the movement of that shape. It's it's not a point tracker. So it's not looking at individual points in uh, in this shape. It's actually looking at the whole texture within here which is why we're able to get like a very fast and very accurate tracking out of it um, and we can we can use this at a later date to do sort of multiple different things uh, but in this case we're just going to have it doing the uh, have it doing the mask for the, the hold-in mask here so if we give this just another second actually i'm bored of giving it another second We've got too much stuff to Give it a second, we'll just scrub through that. And you can see that's looking quite nice. And I can even come up if I've uh, if I need to, we've got some you know new stuff at the bottom of the shield that we couldn't see before. So I can just come in and I can just change my shape as I want to. And because of the way that uh, Mocha works, you know, I'm building these keyframes on top of the tracking. So we still keep the tracking no matter what we do with the shape. Another nice thing that we can do, if you're not uh, the most proficient at creating the shapes up, what you can do is cheat and get someone else to do it for you. And we end up with, here's one I made earlier. We've got our shield 
and we have our sword over here. And I've done this in exactly the same way with the uh, the sword. So all I've done is come in, tracked it up, and I've added, let's have a little look on the sword there. Yeah, I've added, you know, maybe 10 keyframes uh, to sort of move this, uh, the shape from the left to the right as it goes through, just to make sure that we keep in all of those nice fine details. Cool, then when I'm happy with that, save out, exit, and immediately what we're gonna see is if I zoom in, actually let's uh, turn this off for a second so I can find a point with a lot of reflection, turn it back on, and I'll zoom in so we can see that even better. You can see that's now being held in. And because of the, um, the quality of the spill removal that we're doing, we actually don't even notice that that is green. Pretty cool, eh? I like that. All right. Okay, so one other thing that I want to do before we look at uh, the background is actually come in and look at this edge here. And we can see this all the way around. Is that actually, no, the, most of this is, is pretty good. There's just a few little spaces where we can see uh, quite a, a sort of defined little edge. Um, but actually, for the most part, I've surprised myself at how good I am. Um, and I don't really have too much of, a, of an edge there. Um, but I'm going to show you this anyway, because this is this is always very good. Because uh, there's a couple of things that we can do with the edge, of course. We can use our matte refinements, as we saw before, to kind of shrink inwards. But with this kind of edge, I don't really want to do that again, because we see what it does to the fine details. So instead, what I'm going to do is use my uh, light wrap. So we've got a light wrap here, which comes in and looks at the background that we told it to, which is video one. And it's going to blend that in with the uh, with the edges. So if I come in and come up here, and let's just come all the way up and just have a look at our uh, light wrap only. There we go you can see what it's going to be bringing in onto the edges. So it's, it's just going to sort of come in and we soften that out a little bit, sort of bring in some of the background back onto, the, uh, uh, onto our keyed clip. So this has the effect of kind of just softening those edges or sort of um, mitigating the, the harshness of those edges just by bringing back in the, uh, the background there. Uh, and we can sort of mix that back as well. So maybe we don't want that all the way through. We'll change the apply mode as well. So I'll just bring that there. We also have light wrap spill, which is another way of kind of getting rid of spill as well. So this is, if I come in here, we'll just have a little look, take a look at what's happening on the, the shield. It's actually taking out some of the uh, some of the, the green spill, but replacing it with the the background. So in this case, if I take this to lighten, maybe I don't think we really need this because I've actually got quite a nice uh, spill suppression going on anyway. But this can be just something to bring in some of the more natural. Uh, the natural sort of colors back on the on the composite. Uh, I'm not against this. I think this is this is looking all right. Yeah, I think we'll keep we'll keep that there. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. So now we've got you know a lot of the stuff going on with our key. There's a few things I'm going to change up in a in a little minute, but I want to turn our attention to the uh, the background now. Because again, the background is a huge part of getting this shot to work. Um, you know, if we if we do just have a uh, presenter on a uh, sort of motion background, it's it doesn't really matter too much that they they uh, 
sort of fit in in a sort of natural way. Uh, we just want to have the presenters kind of standing out and standing, you know, clear of the background. Uh, in this case, I do want to have that sort of more natural look going on to it. Uh, so I'm going to come into my background layer and we're going to do a couple of little little things to this one. OK, so the first thing you see is that we have our light mismatching. So on our uh, squire here on our uh, actor, we have the light coming in from the left, from this side. On the walls, we actually have the light coming in from the opposite side. We have it coming in from the right. So that's no good. So we just need to uh, to sort of flip this over in a fast way. So I'm sure there's a uh, uh, there's got to be a filter that's going to help me to uh, to flip this over quickly. So I'm going to type in fast flip, and lo and behold, we have VCC fast flipper, and it's called fast flipper because it flips things in a fast way. Um, it does more than just flipping things. We can do like fun mirrory stuff uh, and blend things together and do you know loads of interesting stuff. But in this case, right now. All I want to do is just flip these, uh, flip this over. But actually, I did like the way the other thing looked, but maybe not for right now. Um, and I'm just going to add a bit of a blur. Now, we do have lots of blurs available to us. We have some of the, obviously, the built-in Premiere blurs. But I'm going to use one of our BCC blurs. Uh, I could use just a, a regular Gaussian blur, just a nice, fast Gaussian blur. but I'm going to use the fast lens blur and just drag that over the top of my wall here. Uh, the nice thing about the fast lens blur is it is fast, it's a blur, and it looks like a lens. Um, so we've got things like the iris scale we can change up. This, this is obviously blurring out far too much. I'll take this maybe around about four. Let's see how that's looking. That's kind of looking all right actually um it's helping it's helping our hero to sort of stand out from the background but the um only thing that i don't like about it is that it's the same level of blur throughout the whole thing now one of the really nice things about the fast lens blur is it has this z map built in so we can actually tell it or point it to a um to another layer uh, like a black and white layer that will actually decide how much uh, blurring is uh, is going to happen based off the black and white channels, or uh, sorry, based off the black and white levels of that other clip. Um, I'm far too lazy to be creating up Z maps for things like this. So in uh, what I'm going to do instead is use the pixel chooser. Now the pixel chooser is a feature that is built into uh, pretty much every uh, continuum plugin and it's a way of limiting where that a filter is going to be affecting so i'm going to turn my pixel chooser on and i'm going to get a lovely nice little error from premiere again i'm going to ignore it usually safest to do that and we can come down into the uh the pixel chooser masks here and we can choose where we're going to be uh, putting in our our mask so I can either create sort of a primitive shape or even use a mocha spline. Um, we can reuse mocha splines if we wanted to. So I could take the, the shield one that I used earlier and sort of recycle that. But here I'm going to just use a just a, a sort of basic gradient. And we can see that it's now adding in a gradient. So the left hand side is completely in focus and the right hand side is completely out of focus. Um, you know, it's it's a look. It's not the look I'm going for, but it's a look. Uh, so we can come up to view map mask and actually just take a little look at what that's doing. I'm even going to turn off my uh, green screen clip just so we're going to speed this up a little bit. So I can come in, I'll invert that mask. I can sort of choose the distance or change the distance a little bit. The pixel chooser mask works in exactly the same way as you would expect it to, same way as the key did. So, you know, uh, anything that's white is 100% affected, black 0% affected, and gray more or less affected. So it kind of makes sense there. 
So we take a, a sort of li little look there at the final clip. I can sort of see if that's working for me. I can even mix in or mix back the mask intensity. So I'm not always using the entire uh, you know, intensity of the pixel chooser mask. I think that's looking that's looking all right. So let's turn our, our boy back on. There we go. So I'm I'm kind of happy with where we're we're headed here, sort of like this. Now at the moment we've got our foreground, we've got our background, and they're still not matching in properly. So we want to sort of bring them all together uh, and the way I like to do that is to kind of add effects in over the top that are going to help to sort of bind them together a little bit more. Um, the first thing that I notice is that the the colors are just a little bit off between the uh, the foreground and the background. Now one of the biggest reasons I like using Primat Studio is not just because of the quality of the keying but because I've got everything in one place. Uh, this is especially useful if I'm uh, working in an NLE. If you've got, you know, if you're in After Effects, you're kind of used to working with hundreds of effects, hundreds of layers. When you're working in the NLE, you, you know, you really want to kind of keep your timeline as neat and tidy as possible. So the few, not, not having hundreds of effects on top of each other is actually a big bonus. Not having hundreds of layers on top of each other also a big bonus. So I'm going to come into the Primat Studio and turn on my color correction, and I can do simple things like um, use, doing temperature changes, so either making it a bit warmer or a little bit cooler, or a lot cooler in this case. That's uh, a little bit too cool. I'll probably take that to around about I don't have it before about 12. That kind of looks all right. I can tint things up or maybe add a little bit more saturation to it as well, just a touch, uh, possibly add a little bit more uh, contrast as well. See what that does for me. That's kind of looking, yeah. Yeah, I kind of buy, I buy that those two are in the same sort of place. But now we need to sort of tie them together. And there are a few different things we can we can do. And I've just seen the time where well, time is ticking on. Goodness me. Right. Let's uh, go back onto our background layer. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is add in a lens flare. If you've ever seen any of my work before uh, or gone through any of my other uh, tutorials, you'll know that I'm a sucker for lens flare. I love lens flare. If I've got a camera in my hand, I'm pointing it at a sun. Um, so one of the things that I like with just a, a little sort of subtle lens flare, we don't have to go too over the top, is its way of just kind of having light playing on the different uh, different areas and kind of just, we can use it to kind of help to shape a uh, viewer focus or sort of tell a bit of a story. Uh, if I come into uh, down here, you can see in the lens, uh, BCC lens flare 3D, there's a lot of stuff we can be changing. I'm not going to change a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to come straight into the effects browser. And the effects browser is where we find our presets. And we can sort of start to look through and figure out what uh, effect is going to look best for us. Um, I'm going to come in. Actually, I like that diffraction. I do like that diffraction. Um, but I might stick with where were we with something yeah something around about that that soft uh, colored fog let's stick with that i'm not too keen on the color but luckily we can change that uh, and as soon as i'm happy with that i'm going to hit apply and it's going to have a little bit of a think or oh, it's not going to have a little bit of a think let's find another one there we go uh it didn't want me to to use that one Let's go, there we go. It's one of the uh, the risks of running uh, the uh, the webinar software 
on two different resolution monitors. That's something I won't do again. Uh, I'm coming in, I'm looking at the fog, turning the fog off. Don't really like that fog, it's too foggy. Uh, I'm also going to come in and I'm going to come into my flare itself and I'm going to change the colour. So I'm just going to use my eyedropper and I'm going to try and find something in the, uh, there we go, it's just anything actually within one of the highlights there, just to kind of, so we're matching sort of a similar sort of uh, colour in there. And let's sort of bring this over and I'm going to bring it behind. Hang on, let's uh, turn that off for a second so we can just move, uh, work a little bit faster. And I'm going to have this bigger. I want it quite a lot bigger. But as soon as we scale any of this stuff up, obviously it gets far too intense. So we're going to scale it up. And we're going to bring the intensity down. And I like my little um, chroma rings there. I want to see if I can maybe uh, bring those on. And maybe there we go, the chroma fan. Maybe come up and change that up a little bit. There we go. So we're just kind of moving that around. So it's going to be, when I put the... Uh, uh, our hero back in the shot. That's just going to bring that in and sort of we have a almost a religious painting sort of feel to it. I might even make that a little bit bigger now, a little bit brighter. Now that I see that there. So let's take the intensity, what about 48, I reckon. There we go. So we're, again, we're just trying to help to uh, sort of marry up the foreground and the background a little bit just by adding in elements over the top to sort of bring those two together and the other thing that really helps to do that is obviously color and i'm going to use an adjustment layer and i will find i can either create a new adjustment layer or i have one just lurking about in my solids down here adjustment layer is just a it's like a, a filler layer in, in Avid. It's just a layer I can stick stuff onto that's going to adjust all of the layers beneath it. Um, cool. And I'm going to add in a couple of color clips or color effects. And again, I want something that's fast. I want something that looks like film. Hey, and we've got fast film process. And again, I'm going to use my effects browser and bring that in there. So this is what I like to call color seasoning. Um, I've got all of these quite extreme uh, color effects that I kind of I kind of like, but I can also see that they're sort of, you know, they've, they've, they've got quite a lot of, uh, they pack a bit of a punch. So what I like to do is is find one of the um, the little presets that takes me in the, the right kind of direction that I want to go to. You see, that is packing a punch. And I'm going to take that mix with original, and I only want 10% of that, if that. So I'm going to take that to, um, yeah, mix 90% mix of the original back there. And let's have a little look. And it seems like a sort of subtle difference actually maybe that's a little bit too subtle maybe i'll take that to 82 but you can start to see even with just like a tiny bit of seasoning we're going to get quite a big effect you know that's that's looking quite uh, uh yeah quite quite good there uh, i might come in and actually i do have coming to webinar i have a little preset of my fast film process exactly set up how I like it because I like to cheat and actually you can see that my cheating probably wasn't that dissimilar apart from the error it wasn't that dissimilar from where we had it before which is it's kind of all right and another uh, effect that I absolutely love and doesn't get the uh, doesn't get the love it, uh, it needs or deserves is two strip color and this is this is cool. This is one that when you look at it, like just uh, on the on the first glance, you kind of think, oh wow, that's 
definitely a look. Um, and we come into the effects browser. Again, we can have a little look at this. Uh, we can start to see, oh yeah, this is this is definitely definitely a look. Is this the right look for me? Um, I'll choose summer sundown, maybe a warm faded. Yeah, warm faded. There we go. And hit apply on that. And 100% uh, these can be pretty extreme. Um, I actually kind of like this, uh, but you know, I think it's a little bit nicer or a little bit more usable in my kind of day-to-day -day projects where I'm just trying to get things looking you know, a little bit sexier, just to kind of mix it back just a little bit. I like to, to think of these kind of effects as you know, seasoning, as salt and pepper. You don't get you know, a beautiful dish and then just cover it in salt. What you do is you just drizzle just a little bit over the top and it just helps to enhance the flavor up for you. And, oops, that's not that one. There we go, Let's look at that one. What I was trying to do was just sort of bring this up here so we can see what's happening. Uh, and I can see that I've absolutely run out of time. So I'm just going to short circuit this a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is add in like a final final effect. And this is, this is something I do all the time is adding just one effect over the top of uh, like one physical effect over the top of uh, my background and foreground. So often this is a, uh, a light layer, something maybe something like a lens flare or uh, maybe it's something like uh, film grain. In this case, I'm gonna add in a little bit of, uh, or some particles. Uh, I've just got a black solid that I've just put in there. Uh, and I'm gonna come in and I'm going to use my good friend, BCC Particle Illusion. And Particle Illusion, as the name kind of uh, says, let's actually come out of there, Lort Particle Illusion. Yeah, Particle Illusion, as the name kind of uh, intimates, is a particle system. Uh, and what it allows us to do is, it allows us to use lots and lots of fun, different types of particles. We, we've got sparkles, we've got smoke, we've got fire, we've got water. There's you know thousands of different presets here. Uh, I'm gonna look for something fiery maybe. Uh, and find something that is going to be suitable. Uh, I won't look too hard. If I have to look too hard, then I will load in my presets. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, let's let's actually just come in here. I'm going to cancel this out. I'm going to succumb to the agony of choice and just say actually I'm going to completely limit my choice to this one here and this would be there we go a little bit of smoke in the distance there I can come into launch particle illusion again and open particle illusion There we go. It's, it's, it knows we're coming close to the webinar, so it's, it's wanting, it's wanting and willing me to crash. Premiere is not going to crash on me. Particle Illusion isn't going to crash on me. Nothing's going to crash. It's going to be perfect. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this emitter, so we can have two different versions of it. Duplicate that. There we go. Lovely and maybe move that over a little bit. And the cool thing is now, once I've duplicated this, uh, an easy thing to, to do with Particle Illusion is to make it so it looks different. Uh, all I'm gonna do is change this random seed number. That's it. And now we've got two different types of, uh, of flame. I can even come in and maybe change, like, change the size down or something just to make it so it's not completely the same. And we hit apply on that. You're not going to do me, Premier. You're not going to do me. I know you want to crash, but you're not going to. We're this close. 
Uh, and I'm going to come in. I'm just going to change my blend mode to screen here. Uh, I could have applied uh, particle illusion to the the layer itself, but because we're wanting to affect you know multiple different layers, it's probably easier to to, to bring it back in there. And then we have our final shot. So what we've done is we've come in and we've created up our basic key. We came in and then added in our hold in and hold out masks. So we got the reflection going. We got rid of the, the rubbish on the side there. We started to match the background in, which I haven't done here. We added in a lens flare. So we matched in the background by flipping it, adding in the blur, changing up the color on our, uh, on our squire here, adding in a lens flare, and then just completing the effect or adding to the effect with some particles which is starting to look all right there, and then completing the effect with Ben's magical color seasoning. And like I said, right at the beginning of this webinar, you don't have to go through all of these different processes um, if, your, if your project doesn't demand it, you know, but we've, we've managed to do all of this stuff and we're still working on a, a very, you know, timeline friendly four layers here. Uh, and we did everything without any sort of crash whatsoever. So thank you very much for now. If you've got any more final questions, please ask them. In the meantime, I'm gonna hand back over to Jesse and uh, thank you again for joining me. Perfect. Thanks, Ben. That was awesome. We had tons of questions. This is one of our most engaging webinars we've had question wise. So thank you. Um, before I pass it off to Peter, who will answer some of the questions, um, I want to announce who the winners of the raffle prizes are. Congratulations to Ganesh Whale, who has won the Boris Effects Bundle. Congratulations to Carlos Alberto Rohana, who has won the Continuum. A subscription. Congratulations to Kristen Self, who has won the Sapphire subscription, and congratulations to Elizabeth Spagnoli, who has won the Mocha Pro sub subscription. Um, I'm going to pass it off. Uh, you'll be receiving emails from me with all your um, serial information. I'm going to pass it off to Peter if he's ready. Absolutely. Just on you should myself. Uh, Dan, what a great job. Thanks so much. You just, you're the king. Um, so we had tons of questions, as Jesse said, and um, I answered them all, but I got a couple that I'd like to chat about as a group. You know, uh, one which came up was, you know, obviously, what are your system specs and what about the source footage? What, what are the specs on that? Uh, system specs are, I've actually, it's, it's not the most powerful machine in the world. Um, it's got a decent graphics card. It's got, actually, it's got a good graphics card. It's got the RTX 2080. TI graphics card, which is very nice, nice. Um, but it's only 32 gigs of, uh, of RAM, but with Premiere, a lot of it is, is about the CPU, and the CPU isn't probably one of the most modern. I think it's it's probably about 18 months old now, um, right, but it still, right. it still manages to, to crack through quite quickly. Yep, but of course, uh, the GPU, GPU is going to help you on those particles, but that primate filter is CPU only, so that's, you know, going to really rock and premiere on that machine. Yeah, that's right. Um, and with regards to the footage, all of this is Avid DNX uh, HR, I believe. Let's have a little look. Did you source this at 4K, Ben? And this is 4K, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. The original source was, yeah, the original source was 4K. Uh, cool. And I think this has been accidentally working with a full play clip in the timeline rather than the HD clip I was after. So, uh, well done, me. Cool. Hey, uh, uh, Ben, one thing that comes up a lot, uh, came up a lot uh, during the question period in the back end while you were uh, busy demoing away, um, was what about motion blur? So, a lot of people obviously have to deal with motion blur when they're keying out foreground subjects over background. And, you know, this can be like a hand movement. It could be, you know, an arm, a whole, like a dancer. So the whole body is moving at times. Yeah. And how, you know, in, with your experience, um, with the many years and thousands of subjects that you've had to key off, what is the best approach for dealing with motion blur? Most, the most important thing about motion blur is 
it's the same same answer as with uh, with hair. It's spill suppression. Um, that is that is the secret to a lot of uh, a lot of motion blur. Um, if you're working in After Effects, there is a um, like there's another uh, one of the Adobe built-in ones that can help with with motion blur uh, if you're having a lot of trouble with it. But I find that probably nine times out of ten, maybe maybe you know even more, uh, motion blur is is handled effectively by sort of under keying and and really focusing a lot on the uh, on the spill suppression spill suppression and uh, sometimes multiple instances of the key ear so oh, one could oh, be yeah. focused just on like the hands which are you know obviously like uh get a lot of that darkened motion blur in between fingers and hands moving so you could have a separate key pass for that and just uh you know comp that in on top of it i would imagine yeah yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely i mean we've been, we've been focusing on just like a a single key ear instance in this uh in this section but yeah there's there's absolutely nothing to stop you from breaking more complex shots up into into multiple sections so uh sometimes if you've got a really horrible uh, hair shot uh then you can sort of just focus out the head uh and key that with one way and then focus on the uh, the rest of it in a, in a different way uh, and that's where obviously we're using the, the marsh shapes uh, in this way you know that's that's another way of sort of just using those outside marsh shapes just to kind of isolate out certain areas that you want to use right right um you know uh one final um thing but less of a question than more of just like a little bit of a moment or two to chat about it is of course gpus and the last final question that came in here which i haven't written an answer to because we're going to chat about it is how does amd um as it here it's from uh, miguel what does AMG GPUs compare with NVIDIA regarding Boris and Media Composer? So, you know, as we know, um, the Continuum filters are OpenCL and OpenGL, so they will work equally well with NVIDIA cards or AMD uh, cards. Has that been your experience, Ben? With the uh, pretty, systems? pretty much, yeah. I've, I've not run any benchmarks, especially with the, uh, the newer AMD cards, but um, yeah, I haven't noticed like a, a huge, a huge difference in, in sort of regular working. Right, right, right. Cool. Well, um, I, I guess we're out of time now. Um, ben, thanks so much again for the brilliant job you did there. Really explained things and people are so thankful. I, I wish you could see the questions that I answered because they just loved what you were showing. And uh, I just want to say thank you again for that. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much thanks for joining. Thanks everybody for joining us.